Some people view being a little brother as the negative, but little brothers should be respected. They learn from the older brother. Sometimes develop more quick. They become hella mentally tough from years of abuse from big bro. But when it's all said and done, they usually can't quite compare to the older brother. Well, this video is about one little brother who to a lot of people went harder than big bro, had more heart, more soul, was truer to the game, and was beautiful in, in his simplicity. He never tried to overdo it. Due to the structure of the version of the sport that he represented, he offered more nuance. A game within a game. Two of the greatest modes ever created in sports video game history. And the actual birth, the inception, of this channel now if you're new here i generally do what happened two videos about former college football star some of you guys may not even know that i became known first for playing ncaa football 14. but here's how the structure of the new videos generally go we take a former college football star give his history his rise to success and we try to pinpoint what actually went wrong to maybe in his run or whatever the case may be for that player go through his whole career and then i even go as far as to let you know exactly where he is or what he's doing today today's video is going to be no different we're going to look at the history of the ncaa football video game series what happened to it and how we can get it back so if any of that sounds interesting to you consider subscribing and make sure you share the video as that helps the channel to continue to grow now there's a ton to cover so we're actually going to go ahead and break this video into two parts part one is going to be the history of the ncaa football video game series where it started from and how it morphed into what we know and love today part two we're going to talk about about why it no longer exists we're gonna dive into all the legal nuance talk about this guy's involvement so on and so forth so if you're excited for this video and if you're excited for part two don't forget to click the thumbs up button let's go ahead and shoot for a thousand likes on this vid without further ado it's time to dive into the history of my favorite video game series ever ncaa football All right, now before we jump into the video, I want to give a quick shout out to today's video sponsor, SeatGeek. SeatGeek is an app that has access to tickets from all over the internet. And they give that access to you right at your fingertips, making buying simple. They put a score of 1 to 100 on each ticket, letting you know the quality of the deal that you get. One of the doper features is you can preview the view from any seat that you may be select. That way you already know what it's gonna look like before you even get there. So if you plan on attending any game, click the link in the description, download the app, and make sure you use my code FLIMLO for $20 off your first purchase. Now before we can discuss what happened to the NCAA football video game series, we must first discuss what happened to the Bill Walsh college football video game series. So before the name was actually changed to NCAA football, the series actually went by a couple different names. First of which was Bill Walsh College Football. It dropped in 1993 on the fourth generation consoles. Yeah, the 16-bit era Sega Genesis Super Nintendo. The series had humble beginnings, man. It only featured the top 24 teams from the 1992 season and then 24 historic teams, which started at 1978 up until that point. Now getting Bill Walsh to endorse the game was obviously meant to work the same way that John Madden had worked for pro football. When I say NCAA was truly the little brother of Madden, yo, I mean it. And a lot of people have no idea about this and I can tell based on like a lot of Twitter arguments I've seen, but the game actually did not have the official college licensing at first. So they identified the teams as cities and the players by numbers, which they continue to do. So Texas A&M would be called College Station, you know, so on and so forth. Like you knew who it was, but they just didn't have the official logos and the name. The game modes that was featured in the first edition was Exhibition, Playoffs, and All-Time Playoffs. No Dynasty, no Road to Glory. Those modes would later shape the series, but at this point, they was way down the road. So next up came Bill Walsh College Football 95. Now this was the first time they added the year, but that's not all they added. Added. They added customizable seasons, stat tracking, which is extremely important. And they even added a bowl game system. Now, it wasn't the official bowl games, it was made up bowls, but still. Now, I know most people know this, but trust me, people still, still mix this up. But the way sports games work is, games actually release during the calendar year 
before the year that's shown in the title. So Bill Walsh College Football 95 would have dropped in 1994. That's just so that we're on the same page. Y'all know exactly what year it is as we go forward. Without me having to say the edition and the year constantly since they're actually not the same. Okay, so by the time the year 1995 rolled around, EA was ready to level up again. It's kind of crazy thinking back to a time where video games actually significantly improved from year to year. Good times, man. So in 1995, they dropped the endorsement from Bill Walsh and renamed the series College Football USA 96. Now this was the first version to have representatives for all the D1 1A schools. There was 108 of them at the time. I think there's like 130 now. But 108 teams is a huge deal when you think about the fact that the previous versions had Top 24 teams, 24 story teams, talking about 48 teams. And now you just more than double that. So that's what's up. It was also the first in the series to feature the real bowl games, man. Orange Bowl, Fiesta Bowl, Rose Bowl. Play a little 11 game series and then you advance to your bowl game. And I'll be honest, man, you would think that's enough. You know what I'm saying? That would have been enough to sell the next game, but they took it even further. They added substitutions, injuries, audibles, fake snaps, jukes, spins, dives interceptions, laterals, a lot of stuff that, yeah, is essential to college football, but it was still a huge step up from the year before, in addition to getting the bowl games and doubling the amount of teams that they had in there. And due in large part to all that stuff I just said, College Football USA 96 was named the most in-depth and authentic college football game to date. All right, moving on to College Football USA 97. Now, this was the first installment to have a true feature athlete on the cover. Of course, the Bill Walsh versions had Bill Walsh on the cover. And then College Football 96 had like five teams being represented. Dude from Kansas State does have the biggest picture, but it's still like five teams represented on that cover. But Tommy Frazier, quarterback from Nebraska, can say he's the first true cover athlete for the, uh, the NCAA series, even though it wasn't called NCAA yet. More importantly than that though, this is when the game got a key feature that would eventually lead to one of the greatest modes ever, because you can't have true road to glory mode without a creative player. They added creative player, man. I said all that to say. <laughs> It was kind of dope too, because you can create up to 28 people, man. You can make a whole damn team. Other additions included the ability to adjust the weather and it added like some authentic playbooks to Wishbone and stuff like that. Now for a very important date, man. July 31st, 1997. NCAA football is officially born. EA struck a deal with the NCAA that was actually originally intended primarily for the NCAA March Madness series. But one of the residual effects is it rolled right on over to football and we got NCAA Football 98. And this was a key release for the series, man. They made the definitive name change to NCAA 98. They got the official licensing and they added my all time favorite mode for the first time, Dynasty Mode. But it wasn't exactly the fleshed out mode that we know today, man. You could take a team, control them for four seasons. You did recruiting, but only in the off season. And then you go through that little four year process. Still though, key addition. NCAA Football 99 added the ability to edit names. They added fight songs, crowd chants, and really started to dig into trying to bring in that actual college football atmosphere into the video game. You can now actually win the Heisman Trophy instead of winning the EA Sports MVP award. And it even featured an optional playoff mode at the end of each season in Dynasty. Yeah, we could use that now. NCAA Football 99 was actually nominated as the best sports game of that year but narrowly lost out to NBA Live. But it was still a critical year because it was the first time that it was actually rated ahead of Matt. The game was starting to really stand out on its own. Now the NCAA 2000 through 2005 edition saw some classic EA-isms, if you will. Features being taken out and added back in, take a step backwards and then stumble forward a few. The game also underwent the transition from the PS1 era over to the PS2. It came Xbox, GameCube. They added and removed Creator Team a few times during this span. They added the trophy case that's still in the game today. Crowd noise became a factor during this time. You know, you're on the road against a big team or a team that got a lot of momentum going. You get the little squiggly lines and you can't hot route or audible. Yeah, that feature was introduced 
use during this stretch. This stretch between the 2000 edition and the 2005 edition was also going to be the last stretch that we would see the individual FCS schools, the D1 AA colleges, man. They had 70 plus FCS schools in the game at that time. So after that came NCAA football 06. Now, of course, this one had to stand on its own. This is probably the definitive version to many people. I mean, this 06 installment is the foundation to the version of the game that we play today. What do I mean? Let's talk about it. First off, this was the first edition to add in-season recruiting into Dynasty mode. You had off-season recruit, but this was the first time you had to stop and recruit week to week. And it really added a whole nother dimension to the game. And in my mind, separated it from Madden forever. The beauty of the week to week recruiting is it's imperative if you want to have sustained success. It also increases your ability to go from a one star program eventually up to a five star school as you have more control week to week on what you're doing. I don't mean that process was easy, but you just have more control over it. Like it truly gave you a rewarding way to build your team and it became for me and many others a true game within the game i mean you couldn't just trade for the best players or trade for the top picks or hit the jackpot in free agency like you had to slowly go through this tedious process and when it worked out well and you land that big recruit yo there's no better feeling i lie there is a better feeling when he actually gets on the field and then makes a big play after you land that big recruit that's an even better feeling they also made a huge breakthrough with a mode called Race for Highs. This mode was the predecessor to Road to Glory. How did it work? Pretty much the same as Road to Glory, very similar. You start by selecting the position you want your character to be. Then you have to complete workouts for college scouts. Now, of course, they got high school there now. At that time, you went through drills for college scouts. And, and after you finish with the drills, you get offered a scholarship to three schools. Now, depending on how good you did in the drills, depends on you know the level of school that offers you. I will admit that part of it is a little bit of a novelty because you could technically just walk on to any school and start from day one. So they put you on a team and then each year your attributes increase depending on how well you perform during that season, man. It was dope. That's why 06 is the most important, most definitive version of NCAA football. It's not my favorite though. NCAA 07, now this one's big because this was the last transition that the game would ever make, man. It transitioned to Xbox 360. We all know it lived and unfortunately passed away on xbox 360 well technically i guess the game is still alive but it never was able to upgrade to the current gen of our console one thing about 360 is the fcs teams or the individual ones never made it over to the 360. Like if you had ncaa 07 for the regular xbox or playstation i think you still had all the fcs teams but on the 360 for whatever reason maybe memory due to the graphics or maybe they were just experimenting because they knew it would sell anyway finding a way to stop putting all those teams in because they never got the players right anyway so ncaa 08 edition to the ncaa 12 edition had pretty much already laid the foundation like i said after 06 that was pretty much the last foundational version and then every year after that they pretty much just built on what 06 did then they transitioned over to the next gen of consoles on 07 so between 08 2012 they were pretty much just kind of earning out issues graphics got a little bit better the uh gameplay mechanics like it got smoother it felt better they started to expand their recruiting as well um i think 08 is the first edition where you actually got to call the recruits and have a conversation with them pick a topic of conversation if they ain't like what you were talking about they hang up the phone it was dope man um i think overall ncaa 13 has the best recruiting that when you had to call but you had to sway pitches and if you like me you like to build up those smaller schools you only had one or two decent pitches so if the recruit didn't like those pitches you were pretty much done unless you could sway those up to a decent amount then you have a fighting chance but is it worth the risk is it time to go for a sway is it too early you don't want to piss the recruit off keep trying to swim and they hang up it was dope man now i will say the one issue with the recruiting in that game is it took longer like if you did it right one week of recruiting took longer than playing that week's game it took forever which is why i think they dialed it back in my favorite version overall 
of NCAA, the last version, the last Don, the last one, NCAA Football 14. Now, while starting out on a little bit of a negative, I do wish the recruiting was a little bit more robust, maybe a few steps closer to 13, because it does tend to get a bit easy. And if y'all been around for any stretch of time, y'all know I pretty much master recruiting in that game. But the thing that's separated from me is the gameplay bro the ability to chain moves added a whole new element i mean the double juke you can juke into your spin back juke into a spin come on man and knowing when sometimes it's just use the basic move because it was pros and cons to each move you lose speed you lose momentum and for the first time on offense i felt like i could truly take advantage of the agility of a player and that's something that really separates that game. It's not just about speed. You can have a player with elite speed and trash agility and elusiveness versus a player with okay speed and elite agility and elusiveness. I'm gonna take that second player, bro, and I'm gonna be way more effective. And if you have stick skills in that game, it was another skill gap that you can add in to kind of take your game to the next level. I've said this before, but my favorite thing about the NCAA football series is that the players seem to actually take on their own personality. I've had players with similar attributes who play completely different. I've had 90 plus overall players who was okay, had 78 overall players who seemed like the greatest player of all time. I had a 94 speed receiver named Brent Davis. He finished up 97, but he started 94. He was the fastest player I ever had. And I had Buku 99 speed players, but for some reason, this dude could just separate, bro. I don't know why. <laughs> Does it really make a ton of sense? He just had that extra gear. And I felt it was realistic because sometimes the player with the best 40 speed don't play the fast. And sometimes that can't miss recruit, you actually miss on him. Sometimes he's a bust. Sometimes it takes him a couple years to develop. And I've experienced all of that in that game multiple times, which is what kept me playing it for so damn long. Yo, sometimes that dude that been sitting on your bench for like three years and never could get on the field, then as a red shirt junior, you're forced to put him in because of injuries or whatever the case may be, and he end up being an absolute dominant erupt and taking a team to a championship. Then starting the next year, despite not having as good an overall as maybe somebody else and winning the damn Heisman or something like, like bruh. <laughs> That's why, like everybody who's still watching this video at this point, I do miss the NCAA football series. I wish it was still a yearly release, but my boys over at IMV Gaming are working on a new college football game. They've come so extremely far. I'm gonna leave a link in the description to check out their website, check out their Twitter. They raised a ton of money. They got endorsements, sponsorships, and I will have a full update video coming soon for that but if you're not aware of a man check them out and be aware that was a brief history of the ncaa football series up to this point now we know ncaa football 14 was the last game released and in part two of this video we're gonna talk about why we're gonna talk about exactly what happened why we hadn't been able to get the game back so on and so forth so again if you're new subscribe like the video gear up for part two and i'm gonna holler at you next time some low raps